Hello and welcome. My name is Eddie Ambler. In this demo, we will go through how to clone a VMDB system using the OCI console. To begin the process of cloning a virtual machine database system, open the navigation menu. Click Oracle Database, then click on Oracle Base Database VM. On the left rail, ensure to choose the compartment where the source DB system is located. In the list of DB systems, find the virtual machine DB system you want to clone and click its highlighted name. For our demo, we will select my demo DB system for the source DB system name. On the DB systems details page of your source DB system, click the clone button near the top of the page. This will bring up the clone DB systems pop-up page. Under the configure your DB system, Select the compartment for your DB system clone. By default, the DB system is created in your current compartment and you can use the network resources in that compartment. For our demo, we will use the same compartment as the source DB system. We will use my clone demo DB system for the display name. We will need to add our SSH keys to provide SSH access to the virtual machine DB system clone. To add the SSH public key portion of the key pair, you're provided with three options. One, generate the SSH key pair from the console. Two, upload the public SSH key file from a previously created set of keys. Three, paste the public SSH key into the console. For our demo, we will paste the public SSH key from a previously generated key pair. The clone will use the SSH key specified during this cloning operation, but the source DB system will continue to use the SSH keys that were in place before the cloning operation. We now need to choose the license type that you want to use for the DB system clone. The options are license included or bring your own license. Choosing license included means the cost of this OCI database service resource will include both the Oracle database software licenses and the service. If you choose bring your own license, this means that you will use your organization's Oracle database software licenses for this Oracle cloud infrastructure database service resource. For our demo, we will choose BYOL license type. In the network configuration section, use the pull down menu to select the VCN in which you want to launch the DB system. For our demo, let's select my demo VCN. For the client subnet, use the pull down menu to select the client subnet to which the DB system should attach. For our demo, let's select public subnet my demo VCN. For the network security groups, known as NSGs, you can optionally specify one or more NSGs for your DB system. NSGs function as virtual firewalls, allowing you to apply a set of ingress and egress security rules to your DB system. For our demo, we will leave the use subnet security group box unchecked. The hostname prefix forms the first portion of the DB system's hostname and will be used as part of the fully qualified domain name. For RAC systems, the database service automatically appends a node number after the hostname prefix. For our demo, we will enter dbclone sys for the hostname prefix. For the host domain name, notice how the subnet DNS and the VCN label are concatenated to auto-generate the host domain name. For the host and domain URL, you'll notice that the value is determined by the hostname prefix and the host domain name. The fault domain is a grouping of hardware and infrastructure within an availability domain. This is an optional configuration. For our demo, we will skip this setting. Now let's provide the information for the initial database of the DB system clone. Remember that the database name must begin with an alphabetic character and can contain a maximum of eight alphanumeric characters. You can use the same database name that is used in the source DB system. For our demo, we will keep the initial name the same as the source DB system. For the database unique name suffix, enter clone. You'll notice that the database unique name is a combination of the database name and the database unique name suffix. Now enter a strong password for the sys user. Confirm the password by re-entering it again. If we click on show advanced options, we can see that we're allowed to apply tags that allow us to organize and track our resources within our tenancy. Click on Clone DB Systems to proceed.
On the DB Systems Details page, you are able to see that our DB system goes into the state of provisioning while our request is being executed, as can be seen on the upper left side of the page. If we scroll down, we can click on Work Request to be able to monitor the operation that we made to create the new DB system. The Work Request shows us the log messages as the operation proceeds. You'll note on the left that the work request starts with a state of in progress and it will move to succeeded once the create DB system request has successfully completed. Now that our work request has completed, note that the work request status has moved from in progress to succeeded, as can be seen here on the left. Click on the DB systems details link in the link trail above to go to the DB Systems details page of our new DB System clone. At the top of the page, you will see that the new clone has the name of My Clone Demo DB System. Under the General Information section, you can validate the following items. The VM shape of standard 2.2, which we had for our source database, is also used here. That the clone source of My Demo VCN is also used here that the license type of BYOL is used here in our clone as we requested. Under the network section, you can see that our clone is utilizing my demo VCN and that it is on our public subnet. Down in the scan DNS name, you can see that the scan DNS name is utilizing the hostname prefix that we provided and you can actually see the scan IP addresses listed here that we can use for our connectivity. If you scroll down, you will see the database that resides on the DB system clone. Take note that although the clone has the same database name as the source, the database unique name is different. My 19 c CDB clone. Click on the database name of My 19 c CDB to go to the database details page. Note that this database has a state of available. Under backup section, also note that the automatic backups are listed as disabled, although our source database had the automatic backup configured. So this is a task that you will need to follow up on if you require automatic backups for your clone database. If you scroll down on the left under resources and click on pluggable databases, you will see the list of pluggable databases that also existed on our source database. And they have a state of available. Congratulations on accomplishing the mission of cloning your VMDB system.